Paul Arney says brewing beer is the only thing he knows how to do to earn a living. When it was time to start his own brewery, he had some decisions to make. Breweries can be very uh, almost clinical, like in, you know, processing facilities. And so I really wanted to have something very small that uh, evoked all the things that I find inspiring about beer and beer culture. All the beer styles that we talk about today all came from a certain place. Okay. And these people, the brewers, using their creative brains, utilized the equipment that they could make with their hands mm -hmm. and the ingredients that they could get from nearby. That, they didn't have any other options. There was a lot of limitations on it. I can rely on my creative brain, but I, I didn't have a whole lot of cash. And so I decided to start on our property, you know, okay. use the native yeast and microflora that's, that's present up there because prior to late 1700s, people didn't know what fermentation was. Right. Right? They thought it was magic, which it kind of is, right? <laughs> but for thousands of years, people were brewing beer in situations where it wasn't just a single yeast strain that they were using. So that creates character, it creates sourness, it also creates challenges. So you're right. taking it from different places, not just one particular place. Yes, yeah. Okay. So really the basic is I'm trying to start with making beer as a completely natural process, right? Okay. Um, and, and you can make wine that way, but beer, because uh, the consumer is okay with having a little sediment in there, we can carbonate naturally. And so I'm trying not to force the beer through our little unique process. Committed to making the best brew he can with his limited means, Brewing in small batches, it takes him up to two years to make five to six hundred bottles versus two to four weeks in a contemporary brewery. One other thing that I'm awfully uh, proud about, I suppose, <laughs> in the brewing world, we talk about styles and we talk about how we classify things a lot. And so people are often trying to make something in particular. And because I was starting with kind of this more of an old world approach, mm -hmm. like we're using barley that's grown and malted, you know, up in Madras, yep. hops from just over the mountain, the water and the yeast from our property. I'm going to do the best I can to put these things together in a way with my brewing knowledge to kind of start it out off and on its little journey, but I didn't really know it's where it was going to end up wherever go. it ends up. Right. You weren't attached to the outcome necessarily. Right. I, that's what I was excited about. It's one of those things you never would have found. Right. Right. And it's it's a more meaningful experience that way. Like champagne, which ages on yeast in the bottle, Ale Apothecary's beers get better over time. I say it's time to pop a cork. It's just so beautiful. Well, cheers. Yeah, cheers for sure. Yeah. I'm excited. I've been describing this to people since I had it because I'm 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 really super excited. Yeah, yeah, great. And if you were blindfolded, you didn't know what you were drinking. Right. It would be you would not even know. You would say, "Wow, I don't know. Is it champagne? Is it beer? Is it wine? What is this?" It has so much flavor, and then the little bit of bubbles. You know what I mean? All the good stuff. I have well, thank to you. say, yeah, no, mouthfeel is really important. It's, it's so good. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And, and just so smooth. <laughs> thank for you. Real. Yeah, you know, I mean, the approach was to be very delicate with every aspect of the process, but to have all these little steps and these little things that we're doing that instead of creating one massive big flavor, yeah. it's a series of, of other tiny little things you can't really put your finger on that sure. hopefully creates depth of complexity. Originally, their flagship Sahele was going to be their one and only beer, but now Paul and his gang are producing half a dozen beers and constantly experimenting. They have a 300 or so member ale club, a beautiful new tasting room, and they ship beer around the world. With the growing competition, with the market that doesn't seem to be growing as fast as it used to, we just kind of need to lock down and, and stay true to who we are. 